Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in 1937 in Tokyo, where Lieutenant Commander Edwin Layton attends a state function dinner, with representatives from the British and Japanese empires. After dinner, Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto meets with Lieutenant Commander Layton, to convey Japan's desire to become a world power, despite the fact that America supplies 80% of Japan's oil. Yamamoto tells Layton if the oil supply is jeopardized, serious actions will be taken. Four years later, the world is at war, with Japan and Hitler dominating the political arena, and influencing the global scene, while America remains neutral. While the USS Enterprise is on a scouting mission far from Pearl Harbor, pilot Dick Best and his radio operator, James Murray, do a regular practice, landing their plane without the flaps and the engine turned off, causing the plane to land unsteadily on deck. Best pal Dickinson informs him their superior officer, Wade McCluskey, is dissatisfied with the stunt. Dickinson also introduces Miller, and advises Best to be gentle with him, because this is Miller's final sea duty, and he is the only radio man in his class who hasn't crashed. Meanwhile, on board the USS Arizona stationed in Pearl Harbor, Lt. Roy Pierce and his crew are preparing for a church service, when the Japanese Navy launches a surprise attack, bombing the ships docked at the time. Layton is alerted to the attack through a phone call. Dickinson and his radio man Miller are on a scouting trip near the Pearl Harbor station, when they are attacked by Japanese planes, killing Miller and forcing Dickinson to bail out as their plane crashes. Back on board the USS Arizona, Pierce saves a young rookie from a safer boat, and stays behind to shoot the Japanese fleets, but he is killed by the ship's explosion. The USS Enterprise is quickly informed of the incident. Admiral William Halsey and his men attempt to navigate the location of the Japanese carrier, in order to launch a counterattack, but they fail, mistaking the Japanese to be in the south, while they are actually in the north. Following the attack, the USS Enterprise arrives at Pearl Harbor, experiencing the horror of the Japanese's massive destruction. Best hopes to locate his friend Pierce alive, but instead finds his charred body, retrieves Pierce's class ring, and looks for his wife. With the horror of Pearl Harbor, the United States of America declares war on Japan, officially starting World War II. In Japan, Yamamoto meets with Rear Admiral Tamon Yamaguchi, and learns that Vice Admiral Chuichi Nagumo did not follow the suggestion of directing the destruction of American aircraft carrier oil tanks, which would have resulted in a costly loss for America. With this oversight, they proceed to propose a plan to attack the aircraft carriers next. Back in the United States, Admiral Chester Nimitz comes to Washington, to receive the President's order, as the newly assigned commander of the United States Pacific Fleet, and to manage the war. Meanwhile, Best and his other soldiers drink in a tavern, and salute Pierce's memory. When Best and Dickinson leave the pub, and watch Nimitz's Admiral car pass by, Best yells at Nimitz, vowing vengeance on the Japanese. Layton confronts Nimitz as he arrives at his office, and requests to be sent to a destroyer, but Nimitz acknowledges his talent as an intelligence officer, despite the failure of Pearl Harbor. Nimitz delegated Layton the task of predicting Yamamoto's next move, since he intends to send Halsey to assault the Marshall Islands, but wants to ensure that it is not a trap. On February 1, 1942, Halsey and McCluskey carry out the Japanese command, to raid the Marshall Islands, targeting both enemy planes and ships. The fight increases as both sides launch strong blows, the Japanese artillery moves through the attacks with ease, while an American torpedo misses a Japanese ship. Best notices a runway full of bombers, and launches a successful attack, bombing the airfield and evading the enemies chasing him. Following the raid, the soldiers return to the USS Enterprise, only to be surprised when Japanese planes retaliate, nearly destroying their ship. Fortunately, an aviation machinist named Bruno Guido manages to shoot down an aircraft, that is purposefully crashing into their ship, but fails and crashes into the ocean instead. Bruno's boldness gains Halsey's respect, and elevates him to the rank of first-class aircraft machinist. Best and his wife, Anne, attend an officer's club party in Hawaii, following their incident with the Japanese. While he goes to buy them some beverages, she meets Dickinson and McCluskey, and confronts McCluskey. She asks him why Best isn't in command of any squadrons, to which he responds he isn't the one making those decisions, and Best's reckless attitude isn't appropriate for the post of leader. Meanwhile, Leighton and Best meet at the pub. Best praises Leighton as the intelligence leader of the fleet, and underlines the need for someone as bright as him in the aftermath of the Pearl Harbor attack. Before calling it a night, Best comes to the table, and invites Anne to dance. On April 18, a month after invading the Marshall Islands, Best is interrupted by Dickinson, while briefing new pilot recruits aboard the USS Enterprise on the east coast of Japan. They notice a group of army bombers on board a nearby carrier, Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle, the leader of the army bombers, 
and his men move out to air raid Tokyo, Japan's capital, with the plan to land and free China. Doolittle and his crew run out of oil after successfully bombing Tokyo, and parachute out of their jet. Doolittle lands in a Japanese-occupied zone in China, but is met by armed residents, who suspect him of being a foreigner. Fortunately, a Chinese school teacher arrives on the scene, to assist Doolittle in translating, proving himself an advocate for bombing Tokyo, and they accompany him to Kuzu. On their journey to Kuzu, Japanese fighter jets assault the town where Doolittle is staying, purposefully killing locals, and exposing China's awful position at the hands of the Japanese. At Hiroshima Bay, Yamamoto is disheartened by the news of the attack penetrating Tokyo, and threatening the Emperor of Japan's life, but he is instantly energized by his superior's approval to finally carry out his plan, to take midway after finishing the initial operation at Coral Sea. Back at Pearl Harbor, Leighton informs Nimitz the Japanese are moving their carriers to the Coral Sea, thus cutting off their lifeline to Australia. Nimitz quickly sends a confidential transmission to Halsey, instructing them to join Yorktown and Lexington as soon as possible, at Coral Sea. Leighton then presents an idea, about Japan preparing for a huge target in an unknown place, but Nimitz insists on Leighton first determining the precise target. The USS Enterprise, commanded by Halsey, arrives 24 hours late at Coral Sea, leaving it and the Hornet as the sole carriers in the Pacific. Halsey speaks with McCluskey and Best, in order to reassign them to new positions. McCluskey, who is also a dive bomber, is now in command of the air group, while Best is in command of a bombing squadron. Yamamoto walks into a war room, where Nagumo and the other Japanese officers are arguing over two potential possibilities for their midway attack. One scenario suggests that the Americans are already anticipating their attack, allowing them to use the American carriers to their advantage, on the other hand, the other scenario suggests the Americans are unaware of their attack, giving them time to retreat, because the enemy will be coming from Pearl Harbor. Yamamoto suggests that they restart the simulation, implying the American carriers must be from Pearl. Back at Pearl Harbor, Nimitz receives a phone call, informing Leighton that Washington intelligence believes Leighton's theory is incorrect, and the USS Enterprise should remain at Coral Sea, but Leighton argues the next target will be their base in Midway, which will bring the Japanese closer to invading Hawaii and the West Coast. Following the rational disagreement with Leighton, Nimitz decides to visit the Naval Intelligence Station, where he meets the cryptanalyst, Joseph Rochefort, who Leighton characterizes as being highly meticulous in his work. Rochefort adds they believe the codename AF, which is described as a significant Japanese target, would take place at Midway, but Washington intelligence claims it will take place in the South Pacific, and with Leighton and Rochefort's insistence, Nimitz will finally believe them. Later, Nimitz learns from Washington intelligence that the intercepted message from Japan reveals that their main target is experiencing water problems, proving Midway is definitely AF. After dismissing his team, Best, now the commander of a bombing squadron, briefs them for training. A rookie approaches Best, and expresses his lack of confidence in flying, but Best stimulates him and assigns him as his wingman. As he leads the rookies onto the deck, his plane has a malfunction as it takes off, indicating a message to the others to stop following him, but due to a misunderstanding, his wingman falls into the water, and is hit by a ship, killing him instantly. The next day, Nimitz pays a visit to Halsey, sees his awful rash condition, and orders him to return to Pearl for treatment. Admiral Spruance eventually takes his post. At night, Best confides in his wife about how he feels guilty for the murder of his wingman, and lacks confidence in leading his soldiers, but and encourages him, which helps him gain confidence. As the war approaches, Nimitz orders the USS Yorktown be ready to fight within 72 hours. He meets with high-ranking officials, as well as Leighton, to design a trap northeast of Midway. Although the officials are hesitant to estimate the Japanese position, Leighton assures them of the exact time and location of the attack. McCluskey briefs Best and a few other officers about the approaching conflict, afterwards, Best approaches McCluskey, and asks for guidance on how to lead his soldiers. McCluskey urges him to make sure his men are ready for tomorrow's combat, and to bring as many of them back alive as possible. Dickinson then interrupts them, informing them of a ship sighting, which turns out to be the USS Yorktown, successfully bolstering their confidence for the great battle the next day. The day of the conflict arrives on June 4, 1942. Best inspires his warriors to prepare for battle. At 6.40 a.m., the Japanese air group assaults Midway, and at 7.40 a.m., the American air group from Midway retaliates, successfully locating the Japanese carriers. Even though the troops of Midway arrive prepared, they are unable to destroy the Japanese ships. A Japanese scouting plane detects the USS Enterprise's planes as they prepare to take off, disclosing their location to the commander of the Japanese fleet, forcing them to rethink their strategy, 
and attack the American fleet instead, essentially falling into Nimitz's trap. A USS Nautilus submarine finds a Japanese carrier around 7.45 a.m., but its torpedo misses the target. Meanwhile, the USS Enterprise squadrons prepare to launch. Best discovers an issue with his oxygen, as the planes fly higher, forcing him to cough violently, but he continues to fly with his squadron. While in the air, McCluskey and his squad are unable to identify any Japanese carriers, leading them to believe they had changed direction. Lindsay's torpedo squadron identifies their objective, and conducts an attack with their torpedoes at 1 a.m. Lindsay's jet crashes after he releases his torpedo, which misses the target, and he accepts his destiny willingly. McCluskey spots a Japanese ship trailing alone after some time. Despite the prospect of running out of fuel, he decides to lead his squadron in the direction of the ship. He is followed by Best. At 9.55 a.m., the Japanese commander spots the Hornet torpedo squadron, flying excessively low, signaling they are coming from a carrier, and are prepared to attack the American task force. Meanwhile, McCluskey and Best track down the Japanese carriers, and seize command of them. McCluskey tries to dive bomb a carrier, but fails. Meanwhile, Dickinson and Best successfully hit three out of four carriers, and depart the scene. Yamamoto is notified about the three carriers, destroyed by the American planes. He believes the Americans are aware of their midway strike. Following the engagement with the Japanese fleet, the crews of the USS Enterprise retreat to their ship, leaving an injured McCluskey behind. Best and his men return to the attack at 4.56 p.m. Best triumphantly bombs the remaining carriers, exacting his vengeance for Pearl Harbor. Later, the Americans win the battle, and decide to withdraw, but Best and Murray have yet to return. After a few hours, Best miraculously returns, just in time for his plane to retire, and is discharged from the Navy for his lung problems. He decides to return home to his wife and daughter. When night falls, the Japanese commanders opt to take the carriers down with them, and Yamamoto gives orders to officially retreat, accepting the destiny of their ships, confirming the Americans' victory in their epic battle against the Japanese. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.